Good afternoon. This is a, a continuation of this morning's uh, joint hearing of the Council's Finance and Environmental Protection Committees on the Mayor's preliminary budget request. And we're going to hear from some members of the public who have patiently waited uh, to give their thoughts on the Mayor's uh, request to the Council. Uh, the first three members that we're going to hear from are Eliza Klein, Sonal Jessel, and Phoebe Flaherty, if you can just step up to the table. My name is Colin Yeager. I have the great privilege of representing the Fighting 44th District in the wonderful little village of Borough Park, Brooklyn, Midwood, Bensonhurst, Kensington. You may have heard of some of these wonderful places. But none of you are from there, so you're going to tell us about what you want to know. Um, you can start any way you want, left to right, right to left, pick a middle, you know, flip a coin. It only has two sides, whatever you want to do. You? Okay. What's your name? Just state your name first and then begin whenever you're ready. There's no clock, just uh, <laughs> keep it brief. Um, my name's Phoebe Flaherty. I'm with the organization Align. Thank you so much for reopening the public testimony for us today so we could share our thoughts on the um, budget. Um, and thanks for the opportunity to testify today. Um, as I mentioned, I'm an organizer at Align, the Alliance for Greater New York. Align is a community and labor coalition dedicated to creating good jobs, vibrant communities, and an accountable democracy for all New Yorkers. We co-coordinate the Climate Works for All Coalition, a coalition of environmental justice groups, labor, and community organizations, all working towards reducing emissions to fight climate change through the lens of a just transition. We recently worked with um, the council um, to pass the Dirty Buildings Bill, Local Law 97. We are in the midst of a climate crisis, and we only have a few years left to take aggressive action to slow and try and stop the effects of climate change. According to the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change's 2018 report, we could arrive at irreversible climate change as soon as 2030. We have no time to waste. The city has made a laudable commitment to lower emissions and has taken aggressive steps to meet those emissions goals through the passage of Local Law 97, which mandates that most buildings over 25,000 square feet meet emissions reductions goals by different compliance periods leading up to 2050. However, meeting our broader citywide commitments will require continued effort. We must invest in the implementation of Local Law 97 and go beyond its reach if we are to meet our emissions reductions goals. The Climate Works for All Coalition is asking the City Council to allocate $1 billion annually to retrofit affordable housing and public housing. Buildings with rent regulated and affordable units were exempted um, from Local Law 97 to protect tenants who had faced increased costs from displacement, but those buildings make up 50% of residential housing stock and therefore represent a large percentage of citywide GHG emissions. We cannot allow these buildings to continue to emit at their current rates and still meet our emissions goals. We must also ensure that the benefits of retrofits from more comfortable homes to decreased localized pollution that leads to asthma and other health issues occurs equitably across New York City. Tenants of affordable and public housing in New York City deserve clean air and comfortable homes um, as much as all other tenants. Without additional funding, we are in danger of not meeting our emissions reductions goals, and meeting these goals is crucial to the future of our city and our world. We are asking the City Council and the Mayor to fund retrofits in public and affordable housing in New York City. Funding climate change, um, fighting climate change must be our top priority now and for the coming years before it's too late. Thank you. Just state your name first and then dive right in. Good afternoon, Councilmember Yeager. Mm -hmm. Thank you also for opening the, reopening the session. We appreciate your advocacy for us. Um, my name is Sonal Jessel. I'm the Policy and Advocacy Coordinator at We Act for Environmental Justice. Uh, we are based in northern Manhattan, particularly in Harlem. Uh, so over the past 31 years, WE ACT has been combating environmental racism in northern Manhattan. Um, we were also have been involved in the passage of a lot of different environmental protection laws, including Local Law 97 as well. Um, so I'm here as a member of the Climate Works for All Coalition. I'm testifying today to demand more funding for action to address our climate emergency. Uh, as we all know, climate change is an issue that has and will affect all New Yorkers. It's important to always act with climate justice framework that climate change impacts low-income communities and communities of color first and worst. Uh, for example, the frequency, severity, and duration of extremely hot days has risen significantly in New York City. Low-income neighborhoods of color are most impacted by health effects of extreme heat due to a number of reasons, such as lack of access to adequate cooling, higher rates of chronic conditions, and higher sidewalk temperatures due to lower prevalence of trees and vegetation. 
WEAC joins Climate Work for All Coalition and stands with the NYC community, members, labor groups, environmental justice communities to demand to fund the future by funding equitable climate action for New Yorkers. Last year, we, New York City passed Local Law 97, to which will move us towards meeting our climate goals, and we're very excited about that. Um, but this year, we're asking to allocate a billion dollars annually to retrofit buildings that were left out of the law to ensure that we fight climate change as aggressively as possible and as equitably as possible. Um, this budget allocation will have immediate impact on job creation, community revitalization, as well as climate. With this budget allocation, New York City can be a leader in the fight for climate action, not only in, in the United States, but around the world. Um, we're we act as enthusiastic to see the successful implementation of Local Law 97. We believe we must expand retrofitting to affordable housing left out of Local Law 97 and fund it, as people living in affordable housing also deserve to have energy efficient homes that will benefit their health and well being. It's important action that will promote equity in our city's fight to slow climate change and improve people's health. Um, all in all, New York City must be aggressive in action to slow climate change. Local Law 97 is a really exciting and important step, um, but we know it's just the beginning and there's much more work to be done by our city government and its agencies. Um, therefore, I join the advocates, experts, and community members to urge the city to fund the climate action and be leaders in slowing this climate emergency. Thank you. Thank you. State your name first and dive right in. Hi, um, I'm Eliza Klein, and I'm here on behalf of the Urban Homesteading Assistance Board, or UHAB. Um, for 45 years, UHAB has been creating, preserving, and supporting resident-controlled housing in New York. We work with low- and moderate-income residents and housing cooperatives known as HDFCs, as well as tenant associations to build leadership, democratic participation, and community through cooperation. You have as part of the Climate Works for All campaign because HDFC communities are on the front lines of the climate crisis. Most HDFC residents are disproportionately impacted by the legacies of redlining, disinvestment, and deteriorating building stock. And many HDFC buildings are in the areas of the city most vulnerable to rising sea levels and increasingly powerful superstorms like Superstorm Sandy. We are calling for the city to allocate $1 billion annually to retrofit buildings that were left out of Local Law 97 because we can't fight climate change without including the affordable housing community. The city has already made some strides to fund energy efficiency and retrofit programs for affordable housing, but this is nowhere near enough to match the city's own ambitious climate goals and the reality of impending climate crisis. Residents of affordable housing, low-income communities, and communities of color should not be forced to foot the bill of a crisis they played little to no role in creating. In this moment, we have an opportunity to begin to undo the legacy of environmental racism in New York City instead of continuing the status quo, perpetuating inequities, and leaving frontline communities behind. We can continue to create a just transition to renewable energy that focuses on protecting affordable housing, workers, families, and those most impacted by climate change. Local Law 97 is a good start, but we must be as aggressive as possible in efforts to slow climate change. Residents and owners of affordable housing cannot be left behind in this fight. They are the ones in the front lines of climate change, and they need to be at the table to guide us through a just transition to a more sustainable city. We demand funding for the communities that need it most. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you for, uh, for taking the time, and thank you for sticking around. And I just want to state I'm very grateful to the sergeants uh, who do phenomenal work here, but uh, especially for putting this back together, and to Chairman Costanatidis for his work on this topic. Thank you for coming. The Committee on Environmental Protection, joint with the Finance Committee, is adjourned. <laughs>